Well, shipping is integral to the whole LNG chain. You have the LNG production, you have the LNG utilisation, the shipping is in between what makes it work. We've seen in recent years rapid development of the fleet. We took a long time to reach 100 ships and then it's almost been an exponential drop to 200, 300, 400, 500, which we are now seeing uh, in the very near horizon. So just having the number of ships statistically gives you the opportunities to do balancing voyages opposed to the A to B trades, which uh, uh, typified, the, if you like, the early days of LNG. So the, the trends are availability of ships and utilisation of the fleet, because there's definitely been room for improvement there. The other thing is, with uncommitted ships, this gives the opportunity for traders to take ships for fairly short-term charters, six months, two years, three years, something like that, which is almost unthinkable before. And this market now has got liquidity. So this is really uh, the way the market has developed, and it's quite fascinating to watch it. When you look at costs of shipping, the, you have the, if you like, the daily operating costs and you have the capital investment costs. So looking at them uh, separately, uh, the capital investment on LNG ships has always been high, but actually relative to other sectors of shipping, for example, uh, crude oil tankers and so on, it's the difference is much less than it used to be. It used to be uh, an LNG carrier costs seven times the price of a, a large crude carrier, now it's only about a factor of two because of the upgrading in standards of the uh, crude oil tankers, double hulls, versus the more, um, more production of LNG carriers. There, there's now hundreds of ships and there's lots being built. So you've got uh, economics of, um, of production. The availability of shipyards influences the price of the ship and that is a key component in the entire uh, value chain of, of shipping costs. And that is affected not only by how many slots are available in the yards that have developed the expertise today, the availability of emerging shipyards to build. We're seeing now in China two ships yards are now available to build large-scale LNG carriers. Uh, but also, and this is what a lot of people miss, is how many other ships are on order. And actually, shipbuilding, just at the moment, is at a low. So the LNG is very good value for the shipyards, and this has also he helped to keep the cost down. If you start seeing a large upturn in orders of crude oil tankers, on LPG carriers, bulk carriers, this will affect the ability of the shipyards to deliver. And that will then reflect in prices, which reflects of course, in your capital costs and your ship, uh, your overall cost of, of shipping. Now, uh, regarding the uh, cost of finance, of course, again, we're on historic lows of, of financial um, lending. So this is actually very good. So there are a lot of things that are helping the, the shipping market uh, to develop, um, you know, economic delivered cost price of uh, LNG carriers. On the operating costs, well, <clears throat> we've gone from steam to diesel propulsion, uh, which has reduced your, um, uh, your costs in fuel, which is another major cost of operating. Um, typically, a large LNG carrier used to burn 200 tonnes of fuel a day. We're now down at about 100 tonnes. So that's a massive saving and big benefit to the environment. Of course, there's been an increase in maintenance costs. Conversely, you have more crew available from the market to deal with diesel ships than you had with steamships, which was a niche, and a, a very limited niche. So you have um, really a, a, a sort of fairly neutral cost. There isn't actually much difference in your operating costs, because frankly, the cost of the crew wages is the biggest individual component. And shortage of experienced crew has driven wages up. And uh, personally, I think this is very good because I, I personally feel that seafarers aren't paid enough to, to go away to sea. So this is a good trend, although it does affect the costs. So in terms of the shipping costs, the financial side and the cost of the delivered ship is one thing. The operating costs, which is a relatively small component 
uh, in the big picture uh, is under pressure, particularly in, in crew wage costs. But that's something we can deal with by training and recruiting new people, showing them the, the wonderful opportunities in shipping.